Did you know that not all investment risks are created equal? While many metrics consider all volatility as bad, what if there was a way to focus only on the risks that truly matter, the downside risks? That's where the Sortino ratio comes in, and understanding this can revolutionize your investment strategy. So stick around and I'll break it down for you in simple terms. This time we're going to dive into a powerful tool that can transform how you assess your investments, the Sortino Ratio. And by the end of this video you'll understand how to evaluate your returns relative to the risks you take, focusing specifically on the downside. Even though you're new to investing, this concept will help you make smarter, more informed decisions. Now, the Sortino Ratio was developed by economist Frank A. Sortino as an improvement over the Sharpe Ratio. While the Sharpe Ratio considers all volatility as risk, Sortino believed that investors are primarily concerned with downside risk, the potential for losses, rather than overall volatility. And this led to the creation of a metric that focuses solely on negative deviations from a target return. Now, in simple terms, the Sortino Ratio measures how much return you're getting from the amount of downside risk you're taking. A higher Sortino ratio indicates that an investment is providing a better return for each unit of downside risk. And downside volatility is really what matters when evaluating the riskiness of an investment, especially when you have outcomes that have an increased probability of extreme loss. The Sharpe ratio just looks at excess returns per unit of volatility, and it's not differentiating between upside and downside volatility. The Sortino ratio, on the other hand, looks at returns below some minimum acceptable return. In other words, the Sortino ratio is like the Sharpe ratio, except that it replaces the standard deviation with downside deviation. Now let's take a look at the formula for the Sortino ratio. The investment return is the average return over your investment over a specific period. The risk-free rate is the return of a theoretically riskless investment, like US Treasury bills. And the downside deviation is a measure of downside risk that focuses only on returns that fall below a minimum acceptable return. And this minimum acceptable return is simply the lowest return you'd be satisfied with from your investment. Think of it as the minimum goal you're aiming for. Usually, investors set this at zero for the risk-free rate, because anything below that number means you're losing money or underperforming safe investment. Now for simplicity, we'll use 0% as the MAR, meaning that all negative returns counts as falling below your goal. Let's make this easy by doing the following example. Imagine two friends, Sarah and Mike, each investing for over 5 years. Sarah's returns are 8%, minus 4, 10, minus 2 and 6%. And Mike's returns are 15%, minus 10%, 12%, minus 8% and 9%. Again, let's use the 0% as their MAR, which means that everything that is below 0% is considered a downside risk. To calculate the average returns for Sarah and Mike, we'll add and subtract the uh, returns per year, and then divide it by 5. For Sarah, the calculation ends up to a total of 3.6% average return over these years. And for Mike, also coincidentally, he also has a 3.6% return over the last 5 years. But the big question here is if they are equally good investments. Let's find out. Let's identify first the returns below the MAR, which is uh, below the zero line. Sarah had a negative return over minus 4 and minus 2% only, and Mike had negative returns of minus 10 and minus 8%. Now we have to square these negative returns to make them positive. And then we have to find the average of these squared negative returns, so the total divided by the number of years, and that's 5 again. For Sarah this is 4, and for Mike this is 32.8. Next we calculate the downside volatility by taking the square root, so for Sarah we take the square root of 4, which is 2%, and for Mike we take the square root of 32.8, and that is 5.73. So, in this case Sarah's downside volatility is 2%, and Mike's is much higher at 5.73, indicating that Mike's returns are much riskier. To calculate Sarah's Sortino ratio, we take the average yearly return minus the risk-free rate and then divide this by the downside volatility. And in the end we come up with a Sortino ratio of 1.3. For Mike we will do exactly the same, but he ends up with a Sortino ratio of 0.45. Now what does this all mean? 
Sarah's higher Satino ratio means she is earning a better return relative to her downside risk compared to Mike. Even though both have the same average return, Sarah is clearly managing downside risk much better. Now you'll have to remember that the MAR, so the minimum acceptable return, and downside deviation are related, but they're not the same thing. The minimum acceptable return is your benchmark or target, the minimum return you're happy with. And for many investors the MAR is often 0% as I earlier said. When calculating downside deviation, you first set your MAR, and then look at only those returns that fall below this number, and then you calculate how much these negative returns fluctuate below the MAR. Downside deviation is literally the measure of how much returns swing below this MAR. Again, the minimum acceptable return itself is not a measure of volatility or risk, it's just the threshold you set to separate acceptable returns from disappointing or risky ones. A common mistake traders make is to solely focus on average returns without considering the risks taken to achieve them. The Sortina ratio helps to avoid this by factoring in the downside risk. Another pitfall is using the Sharpe ratio exclusively, which doesn't distinguish between upside and downside volatility. By incorporating the Sortina ratio into your analysis, you gain a clearer picture of an investment risk-adjusted performance. Now if this breakdown helps you understand the importance of focusing on downside risks, then hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe for more insight into smart investment strategies, and if you're curious about other risk-adjusted performance metrics, well, then check out my next video on the trainer ratio to continue enhancing your investment toolkit. For now, this is it, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye!